Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. In our previous videos, we talked about several topics related to the casting process. During all those videos, we talked about molten metal. Do you guys wonder how we obtain molten metal for the casting process? Well, that's going to be our topic for today. As we know, molten metal plays a central role in the sand casting process. The quality of the final casting also depends on the quality of molten metal and the quality of this molten metal is affected by the melting process. For performing the melting process, melting furnaces are used. These furnaces are filled with metal, alloying elements and various other materials such as flux and slag forming components. Flux are inorganic compounds which remove the dissolved gases and impurities, hence making sure that the molten metal is pure and of good quality. There are several types of melting furnaces used in foundries. These furnaces are electric arc furnace, induction furnace, crucible furnace and cupola. Let's talk about them in detail. The first melting furnace that we will talk about is the electric arc furnace. In this furnace, the metal is melted with the help of an electric arc that is generated between the electrodes and the metal. Usually three electrodes made of graphite are used and the temperature inside the furnace can reach as high as 1925 degrees Celsius. Through the open roof, the metal scraps are dropped into the furnace along with a small amount of carbon and limestone. Then, the roof is closed and the electrodes are lowered. The power is switched on and the temperature is allowed to increase for some time within the furnace. Within two hours of heating, the furnace reaches enough temperature to melt the metal. The power is turned off and the electrodes are lifted. The roof of the furnace is opened and the furnace is tilted to pour the molten metal into a ladle. This type of furnace is extensively used in the industries. This is attributed to their high production rate, less pollution generation and ability to hold the molten metal. Now let's talk about the next type of furnace that is induction furnace. Induction furnace has two types which are coreless induction furnace and core or channel induction furnace. In the coreless induction furnace, a crucible is used which is surrounded by a water-cooled copper coil. Through this coil, a current of high frequency is allowed to pass. Due to this current, a strong electromagnetic stirring action takes place which causes heating inside the furnace. This heating is called induction heating. On the other hand, co-induction furnace employs current with low frequency and also the coil surrounds only a small part of the furnace. Induction furnaces find their application in non-ferrous foundries. These furnaces are extremely suitable for superheating, holding and duplexing. Here, superheating is the heating of the metal above normal casting temperatures. This is done to improve fluidity of the molten metal, while duplexing is the usage of two furnaces where the metal is melted in one furnace and then transported to the other. Now, let's move on to the next furnace that is the crucible furnace. This type of furnace is one of the oldest and simplest furnaces used in the foundry. These furnaces consist of a refractory crucible in which the metal charge is placed. This crucible is then heated up with the help of conduction of heat through its walls. Various fuels like commercial gases, fuel oil and fossil fuels are used along with electricity for heating the crucible. As the temperature of the crucible rises, the metal charge starts to melt and in the end, the molten metal is obtained. Crucible furnace is used when small quantities of molten metal having low melting point is required. Well, are we done with all melting furnaces? Well, no. There is one more melting furnace called cupola furnace. These furnaces were used in foundries, but in recent times, electric arc furnaces are preferred over cupola furnaces. This is because of the higher investments required for cupola furnaces when compared to electric arc furnaces. However, these furnaces operate continuously, have high melting rates and manufacture large quantities of molten metals. Well, that's all for melting furnaces. However, before we conclude this video, we shall discuss one more topic which is important to our future videos. Wondering what it is? Well, it's levitation melting. In this process, the metal is suspended inside an induction coil with the help of magnetic fields. With the help of induction heating, the metal is melted and is poured directly into the investment casting mold, which is placed directly below the coil. Investment castings made using this process provides better quality with a fine-grained structure. We will talk about investment casting in one of our future videos. Well, it's time for us to bring the topic of melting furnaces to a halt. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about cupola furnaces in detail and cover more topics on the casting processes. Stay tuned and stay safe. Until the next one, bye!